There are two very exciting, very important OLED TVs coming out this year. We've taken a look at the LG G1 Gallery Series OLED, and now it's time to get into this one. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and today we're checking out the Sony A90J OLED TV. I am very excited about this. We're going to unbox this TV, get it assembled, throw it up on the stand, check out some picture settings, dig into Google TV a little bit, which is new for this year, and then of course we're going to get some first impressions on the picture quality, which is supposed to be very amazing this year. More on that in a minute. Let's do it. Before we get into it though, you know a battle royale is happening between the LG G1 and Sony A90J. Can't wait to get to it. But which one do you think is going to win and why? Let me know about that down in the comments. Also, like and subscribe because we're trying to get past a million subs and we can't do it without you. Finally, affiliate links for the products that we review are down in the description, so check those out if you want to as well. Now, let's get into it. Here's everything that comes in the box. Uh, you get two feet, I love these. They are very heavy and stout and just feel stable in general, very premium feel. For a premium TV, you would expect that. A couple of uh, plastic decorative plates to hide the screws in there. Power cable, remote, I already put the batteries in. This looks like it got a little bit of a makeover, but nothing too serious. And then a uh, small novel's worth of product literature. Leg installation is super simple because we've got a couple of these, I'll call them nubbins, that go into a couple of keyhole slots here. Slide it up to secure it and then two screws go in. Rinse and repeat on the other side and then you can put these decorative plastic pieces into place. And we're up. A lot to see back here actually, more than with most TVs. Part of that is because of the sound system. There are a couple of uh, low frequency drivers here with ports and I mentioned the sound system because Sony says that the sound on this TV has been dramatically improved and it already sounded great in the first place, so I'm very curious to hear it. Looking forward to that. And then over on the far side, we've got all our HDMI inputs. You'll notice that there are two 4K 120 Hertz HDMI inputs. One of them happens to be eARC. I'll talk more about that later. There's also a center speaker connection, so you can actually run speaker wire into this and the TV will act as your center channel. Again, more on the audio later. And then the rest is just pretty cookie cutter stuff. And here we are. I stand by my comment earlier. I like the legs on this TV. They're very sturdy, makes for a sturdy television, but uh, it does also make a great case for a centralized stand because we've got a really wide stance here. Now, interestingly enough, even though this TV is significantly lighter than the LG G1, it actually feels less flimsy than the G1 did when we set it up. When we set this one up, I didn't worry so much that I was gonna like crack the screen. Now, otherwise, the design is very slender, as you can see, and there are little touches that I like, like the fact that the Sony logo down the left is virtually invisible. It's got a very clean look to it. Also, don't forget, this screen is the speaker, all right? There are transducers behind this screen that actually emit sound. We've seen that before, but again, the audio on this thing is supposed to be even better than it was before, much more spacious with more height. We'll see if that plays out in real life. Now, it may look like it's got thick bezels, but that's not a bezel. It's actually a protective rubber trim, which I really appreciate. There's actually a lot of tape and labels that are on this TV that need to go. So let's take those off and then turn this thing on. So as I mentioned before, Sony has converted over to Google TV from Android TV and as such, the experience is a little bit different. Actually, the experience is awesome. So you turn on the TV, it asks you to select your language and your country, and then you're straight into setup for the Google TV. If you have a Google account and you have the Google Home app, this is remarkably easy. So basically, I just scan a QR code from within the app and everything takes place on my phone. It verifies everything from which apps I want to use, whether I want to use voice control or not, there's a little bit of privacy information that you go through here. There's some more a little bit later. And then it's pretty much off to the races. It sets itself up. Now, there's a little bit more to do after the Google TV setup portion on your phone is done. You've got to go through another privacy policy. And this is going to be a lot about what kind of information Google is going to collect from you around your viewing habits. So read this stuff and make sure that you're selecting things that you're okay with. I'm going to go ahead and select all because I just want to get through this quickly. Uh, then we get to 
to the voice section. Here's a reminder, there is a microphone built into the TV, it's at the very bottom. If you do not want this TV always listening, then you wanna go to the mic kill switch on the back and turn that off. Keep in mind, there's also a microphone in the remote control that only functions when you ask it to. So you don't have to use the TV, but if you don't wanna to have to pick up your remote to do basic adjustments and navigation and pull up content, you've always got the option to use the TV. Then it's gonna go through device detection. I only have one device connected, happens to be a Sony 4K Blu-ray player. It accurately detected that device, and now it is completely set up, and I should be able to control it with the Sony remote. Next up, it wants to know about your TV's position, whether you stand-mounted it or wall-mounted it. It. That's because that's gonna have some effect on the acoustics and the TV is going to make adjustments primarily in the base region, uh, depending on where you place the TV. Next up is an acoustic calibration. You can skip this if you want, but I find it works really good. And also it's just super fast. Just tell it to go. It puts out like three seconds of test noises, makes a computation and that's it. Next is just a reminder that the TV does support Apple AirPlay and HomeKit. And then we get to Samba TV. It's basically data collection for ads and for content. Now, if you disable it, that doesn't mean you're not gonna get ads. It just means that they're not gonna be targeted. So I'm gonna leave this off for now because I don't wanna get into it. Next up is the app installation. It verified which apps I wanted installed back when I was using my phone to set up the TV, and that worked remarkably fast. After that, Google TV is ready to go, and you are handed off to the home screen. I'll do a walkthrough of Google TV in just a moment, but right now I want to adjust some settings, specifically the picture settings, because out of the box, it's in the standard picture mode, and that mode for me is a little bit too cool in the color temperature. So we have a few different options here, cinema, game, graphics, photo, and custom. I am going to go ahead and start with cinema, uh, and then ultimately I think it's gonna bounce to custom once I start making some adjustments. So from cinema, I'm gonna go ahead and go down and take a look at some of these settings. Ambient light sensor is on. Generally speaking, this works pretty well. I'll leave it on for now, but I'll disable it when I go to testing. Then we get down to the brightness uh, setting, which by nature is maxed out. They also have contrast and gamma in this section. Uh, this is definitely a little bit different than I'm used to. Sony made some adjustments to its uh, settings menu. HDR tone mapping is not available right now because I'm not in HDR. Black level, I'm gonna leave at default. Same with the black adjustment, but we'll play around with that a little bit later. Peak luminance is currently set at medium, and I can turn that to high. That's a little hot for our camera, but uh, we'll play around with that too. Mostly what I wanna do is get into the motion settings. Uh, motion flow is set at custom. I prefer to just have it off, so we'll start with it off. Then we'll go down to Cinemotion, and I'm really surprised this is set on high by default. Um, I'm actually gonna turn that off, but again, we'll test it out uh, for the full review. So I've signed into YouTube and I love how easy it was because it already knows my Google account information. And here we are in the app. Now, because we're in the app, as opposed to the home screen that we saw before, we're gonna have to make some adjustments to the picture settings here as well. So I'll pull up picture settings. As we can see, the picture mode is in standard. I will switch that to cinema, run down to motion, and uh, we'll turn off motion flow completely and down to Cinemotion, we'll turn that off as well. That will handle any SDR content that we watch on YouTube, but now we need to get into the HDR stuff. So I've paused on a frame of an HDR clip and I am very pleased to see that it has carried over the picture settings from SDR mode to HDR. So I'm already in cinema and the motion settings that I made earlier are already taken care of. That is fantastic. Now I'm gonna pop into Netflix because we need to do some settings for Dolby Vision. And I love this. I'm immediately already logged into Netflix. I don't have to put in anything. That is a game changer for me. Google TV is winning me over. Anyway, so we've paused here on a clip that's in Dolby Vision and as we can see here, it's in Dolby Vision Bright, which is normally what I'd pick, especially for daytime. I just wanna double check and make sure that the motion is where I want it. And indeed, it is not. I need to turn that off and also go into Cinemotion and reduce that down to off. So now Dolby Vision Bright is set up and I can also switch it to Dolby Vision Dark uh, anytime I want to and just make sure that the settings are similar to the Dolby Vision Bright mode. So here's just a really quick walkthrough of Google TV. I've already explained all the advantages of already being logged into all of your apps. That's so, so nice. 
Uh, but in addition, I feel like I'm getting pretty good recommendations uh, as I watch more and more through Google TV. I've been doing that via a Chromecast at home and I'm getting a very similar experience here. Um, now this For You screen is where you land when you first pull things up and you do get access to all your apps right in the second row here. And then as you go further down, there's trending stuff and then specific genres like sci-fi and documentaries, comedies. Um, and then the further you go, you might start seeing some uh, YouTube suggestions, uh, what's popular. It goes on and on and on, but I don't want to uh, drag too long on that. I also do want to point out that if you scoot over to movies, it's going to be obviously very focused on movies. TV shows are in their own section. You can also go to just an app screen and move to whatever app you want from there. And then library is for anything that you've purchased or have a digital code for that you've cashed in. Uh, I've got quite a bit of stuff here uh, from all the different movies we bought for testing in the past. It's pretty great. And then of course you can also just search for content via voice or you can direct it to start playing a particular show on a particular app and it will do exactly that. Well, all I can say right now is so far, so good. I've really enjoyed using the TV up until this point, which is really saying something because I set up a lot of TVs and it's usually kind of a pain, but this TV was a joy to get up and running. And I've just watched, I don't know, about maybe 10 minutes of footage at this point. And wow, we knew this TV was supposed to be brighter. This is the new brighter, awesome Sony OLED television, and it's definitely punchy, really punchy. I'm interested to see just how bright it gets when I get a chance to measure it, but I'm already kind of wowed by the picture quality. I can't wait to dig into it deeper for the full review. Trust me, that is coming. We will put this TV through its paces. We'll also pull out the Sony PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X consoles and give this TV a run for its money in that regard. I mean, I'm already having fun. I'm pretty sure this TV is going to be a winner. The only question is, how big is that win going to be? Thanks as always for watching everyone. Let me know in the comments, is a brighter OLED what you've needed in order to pull the trigger? I'm curious to hear about that. Also, please click like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and here's two other videos that I think you'll like.